not all traits are equally useful when constructing a cladogram. And sometimes a cladogram constructed from one set of traits might differ to some degree from a cladogram constructed from a different set of traits. And for this reason, it is important to incorporate as large a data set and repeat this with as many different sets of traits as possible. So you'll notice that the pattern of relationships which we get here when studying the skeletal and muscular systems, um, this is the same pattern of relationships which we observed from the previous example of a nervous system cladogram. If we were to look at the relationships of traits drawn from a respiratory and digestive cladogram, it would be comparable to that which was uh, derived from the skeletal and muscular cladogram. If we study the cardiovascular system, we could once again come up with an equivalent set of relationships. If we studied the urinary and reproductive systems, the same would apply. And so cladograms can give us what we hold to be real biological groupings, where sufficient data suggests that there are real biological ties between organisms. And so when we use the term mammal or vertebrate or animal or primate, we are hoping to find real monophyletic uh, biological groups which share a number of derived traits due to common ancestry. And cladistics allows us to test our hypotheses and to construct the most accurate uh, family trees possible.